Let's talk about our God-given purpose. I'm Fernanda Longo, and this is the Eden Living Podcast. It happened. God has been working on me for the past three years, and as you can see, I am not very uh, obedient, or let's say not very fast on being obedient. I hustled with him this whole time, but he got louder and louder, and to tell you the truth, in the end of the day, we cannot say no to God, right? So today I'm here to talk to you whether you still cannot hear God or if you hear him, but you are afraid to take the steps to run your race. But before we continue, I want to quickly share with you about this amazing business the Holy Spirit inspired me to create. This podcast is sponsored by Eden Daily Essentials, my very own Christian business. We make all natural handcraft soaps and skincare. The products are filled with skin loving ingredients and they're safe for the whole family. Each product comes with a Bible scripture to remind us of the love, grace, and mercy of God. As a thank you for listening to this podcast, we're giving you 10% off all one time orders. Just go to EdenDailyEssentials.com and use code PODCAST10. We are back. Today, I want to share with you five steps I use to invite the Holy Spirit to my life and help me understand what God is saying to me so I can run the race. The first step, and it's the first thing I started doing years ago, was I start praying a dangerous prayer. So this prayer is really short and simple, and I've taught many people to pray that, and it is, God, open my eyes to see, ears to hear, and heart to understand your plans for my life. Once you pray this prayer, it starts happening. So I'm going to give you a little extra tip on this one. I love praying this prayer every time before I open my Bible. And I'm going to tell you, God is really clear most of the time. And it took a little bit of practice and took a little bit of time and connection. But once he starts talking to you and you start listening, it will get easier and easier. And here is a very important part, okay? God is already talking to you. God already talks to all of us. We are the ones not listening yet. I want to share with you uh, the first time that God was crystal clear to me and I was praying this prayer and I asked a question to God. So my husband and I were going to the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University years ago and we uh, never been before that, we never been a uh, official tither, okay? We didn't on the 10%. Financial Peace is a Christian program and they taught us uh, in more in detail about tithing. And one day I was asking God, should I tithe on the net or the gross? So before I tell you this story, I want to just make it clear, tithing either on the net or on the gross, it's not what is going to take you to heaven or not, okay? This is a very complex and long discussion that we are not going to do today and it could be a topic for a future episode so today don't take this information this story that i'm sharing with you as if that's what you have to do that's what god shared with me and that's what god wanted me to do okay i ask god what do you want me to do like what should i do should i tight on the gross or the net. And then I just randomly open my Bible on Acts 5, right on the verse when Sapphire and Ananias sold that property and they only gave part of the money to uh, the community and they literally dropped that. So I was like, okay, I don't think I want to take that risk. Let's just tie on the gross just to be safe. (laughs) So that was the first time that God really uh, spoke clear to me. I mean, from all the pages in the Bible, that is the one that I opened after asking that question. And after that day, just God starts speaking very clearly to me. So I can ask a question and open the Bible and not always, but many times I get a very straight answer. And I will share with you four more ways that I can get to that point. But the first one, and the most importantly, is definitely asking God to open your eyes, your ears, and your heart. 
The number two is a scheduled time to be alone with God. And this is a hard one, especially if you're a mom like me. I have three kids at home at all times. At the time of this episode, none of my three kids know how to wipe their own bottoms. So I am busy 24-7 doing things for the kids all day long. So it's really hard to schedule time to be alone with God. And I start struggling with this years ago. I clearly remember one time that God told me, wake up at 5.30 and talk to me. If you don't know me, let me just tell you, I am not a morning person. I am not. I am a night person. I wake up right up at nine o'clock at night and I'm good to go. But at 5.30 in the morning, just I'm not myself. But once again, you can't say no to God. I start waking up at 5.30 and I actually went through a study on judges, not an official study, just myself and God. Every morning I read one chapter of the book of Judges for 21 days. That was really mind-blowing God really spoke to me because I was giving that time just for him without all the extra stuff. So you may not be a 5.30 person. Maybe God wants to meet you in the middle of the day, in the end of the day, or whatever time works for you. But it's super important for you to schedule time to be alone with God. And if possible, every day. And that will help you take steps closer to him and understand his plan for you and for your life. That leads me to step number three. Once God starts speaking and we start listening, we have to start taking imperfect actions. I've been leading Bible studies for over three years, and I'm going to tell you right now, the biggest problem with us women especially is that we always think we have to be perfect before we start doing something and that is the biggest lie from the enemy taking imperfect action is how we all have to start god will speak to us but we cannot with our human brain we cannot comprehend God's plan all at once because we just, we are not God. He's God, we are not, and our brain doesn't work as He does. <laughs> so we have to start taking action, and that's how His plan is starts to unfold. I've been working on this podcast for three years, and I've tried to write, I've tried videos. I've tried so many things. And once I would take the step, God would be like, no, that's not it. Do something different. Taking that imperfect action, it is exactly what will lead you to do what God has for you. Once you start taking perfect actions, automatically you will be led to the step number four, which is finding your spiritual gifts. Many times we have to do a little bit, or some of us like me, a lot of inner work to find out our spiritual gifts. And before you tell me, I've heard many times women saying, I don't think I have one. Yes, you do. If you are a believer, if you believe that Christ died on the cross for you, resurrected, and now you have the Holy Spirit, you have spiritual gifts. One or more, I don't know the plan that God has for you, but at least one, you will have it for sure because the Holy Spirit lives in you and that's a promise from Romans 8. So if you don't agree with me, you can go just talk to the Almighty and decide that with Him. But you do have spiritual gifts. So whether you know what they are or you have to do inner work to find out what they are, take the time to do so But when I say take the time, do not sit and wait until the gift is super clear, okay? Remember step number three, taking perfect action. So as you find out your spiritual gifts, take action on those gifts. And you may find out that something you thought was your gift, once you take action, God will tell you, no, that's not what I meant. And then you will work and find something else and take another action. Once you feel like you're going to the right direction, God's going to tell you, yes, keep going. That's the direction. Just keep running the race. 
I am very passionate about spiritual gifts, and I will be talking a lot about this topic in different episodes here in this podcast. So if you want to learn more about yours, stay tuned because we are going to be talking about that a lot. And before I go, I want to give you the fifth step and the last step. We all need to understand we don't have to be perfect to do God's work. First of all, we are not perfect. None of us are. Jesus and the cross met us halfway, exactly where we are. It doesn't matter if on a scale of 1 to 10, your close to perfection is 9, 8, or 1. The cross met us exactly where we are in our imperfections. If you want examples, the Bible is full of examples, but let's talk about Paul for a second. Paul was literally murdering Christians. I don't know about you, but I had a phase of my life that I stepped out of church and I was not murdering Christians like Paul, but I was not as friendly or as what God expect me to be towards my brothers, sisters in Christ. And in the end of the day, all sins are the same, right? Paul was murdering Christians and God chose him to minister to the Gentiles, God revealed himself to him and completely transformed Paul's mind so he could do the job that God set for him. If you have the Holy Spirit inside you, you have been transformed. Your mind works the way God wants it to work. You have all you need to do the work that God set for you. In the time that you live, in the location that you live, God chose everything about your life very specifically so you can do the job that he has for you. So just to recap before we go, the five steps are, number one, pray the prayer. Number two, schedule time to spend with God alone. Number three, Take imperfect actions. Number four, work to find your spiritual gifts. And number five, accept that we are not perfect, but God is. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Eden Living Podcast. Make sure to rate and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss one. New episodes are dropping in each Wednesday and I can't wait to hang out with you again next time. If you want to continue this conversation, head over to EdenLivingNetwork.com for show notes, freebies, discount codes, and how to connect with me on social. I hope you're having an amazing week.